Hello, welcome to Rijanix. Today we are going to discuss about decorator pattern. It falls under structural design pattern. This is also called as wrapper design pattern similar to other wrapper patterns like facade and adapter. Though the purpose and the way you create these wrappers for each of these patterns are different. We will look into facade and adapter in our upcoming sessions. Before getting into what it is and when and how to implement this pattern, let me show you what we are going to build while learning this pattern. We are going to build this shopping cart report where we will use multiple decorators to arrive into this result. We will do this in console application. We will create few HTML decorator classes to get this colorful table in Chrome. So what is decorator pattern? It basically wraps the existing object by placing the given object inside another wrapper class known as decorator class and add new functionality to the existing class via decorators and then exposes the same interface to the outside wall so that the decorator looks exactly like the original class to the people who are using it. If it sounds confusing then please stay with me till the end and the concept will be completely clear to you. So what did we just see in the definition? We have an existing class that implements an interface, say I my interface. Now we want to add new functionality to this class, right? So what we do? We create a base decorator class and implement the same interface, I my interface. Also, since we want to add new functionality to the existing class without impacting the client, the base decorator class injects the object implementing the same interface and hence acts as a wrapper to the existing class. So let's discuss a real world scenario where this pattern can be used and later we will implement the same as well. We are going to design a real world e-commerce shopping cart problem. Let's take Amazon. It is an US based e-commerce company. Let's assume that they have a database in cloud for their products and the prices of its product are stored in USD currency. Amazon sells products in different countries in the world and it has localized prices for different regions, right? It means while calculating prices online, the retailer must convert the prices into local currency and consider factors like sales tax, discount, government policies, etc. before arriving at the final price of the product. So how can we design our application so that our pricing strategy stays flexible? If we have to just achieve this, we can achieve it in multiple ways. For instance, you can achieve it by writing all the logics in the same class with all the if-else blocks. But the problem is, these ifs can grow and grow over the period and the code will be tangled and sooner or later it will start being unmaintainable and will start producing bugs. So it does not seem to be a good solution at all, right? Now one more way of achieving the result is by subclassing. You can think of subclassing each if logics in a different classes. For instance, you have a shopping cart class, inherit this class to currency converter class, call base.calculate price and get the base price of the shopping cart and then write your currency conversion logic and then finally return the total converted price. Now you need to calculate sales tax. Create a new sales tax class and inherit currency converter and again get the base converted price, add your sales tax logic and return. Now the problem here is, if I have n number of functionalities, then I will end up creating n layer of inheritance and your design will explode with class hierarchy. So again, does not seem to be a good solution. Now in decorator, we focus on composition of our inheritance. It means, if we have to add additional functionalities to the existing shopping cart class, then we decorate it with additional classes by composing one class on other. For instance, we decorate currency conversion to shopping cart and sales tax decorator to currency converter. And keep composing additional functionalities using decorators. Let's see the same thing in little different way. So we have a main class containing our existing functionality. In our example, it is shopping cart class. Client calls our main class and gets the required behavior. Let me show you this implementation without decorators in code. Let's hop over to Visual Studio. So you can see here, I have already created a project called decorator. 
and implemented this basic feature. So what I have done here is created an interface called iCost Calculator with a single method get total cost for the given orders. We have order DTO that holds the order details and shopping cart DTO which is basically returned back to the client for displaying as part of report. Created concrete cost calculator class and implemented iCost calculator. This class returns the cost in base dollar currency. Currently kept it very simple for explaining purpose. It just multiplies the total quantity and price and returns it back. We have cost calculator factory which is very simple as of now. Just returns the only cost calculator but definitely going to grow. Then we have our shopping cart class which as of now adds two product in the constructor itself. Ideally we can have a method add to cart to add the product but again for simplicity I kept it this way. Here we have our main method get shopping cart details which basically gets the order list and the total price and give it back to the client. Now there is a private method get total price which basically calls our cost calculator. Please pay attention to this method as this is where we are going to implement our decorators. Here shopping cart class consumes cost calculator which in turn means shopping cart is the client for cost calculator. In our main class we just instantiate shopping cart class and call shopping cart detail and gets orders and total price and call display report method and display the details. Let's run this and see. We get the report with all order details and total cost. Now what if you have to convert the total cost into given country's currency and also depending on the country say add sales tax to it. Let's move back to our slide for a while. Now let's see how we can add additional behavior to this object using decorator pattern. We would like to add the functionality like converting the currency of the total shopping cart cost, add sales tax to it, etc. So for these functionalities, we create our decorator classes. Now how does it work? Client calls the decorator. Decorator calls the main class, which say ultimately calls some database in cloud and gets the object with data. Say in our case, we get $10 as the cost of our shopping cart items. This $10 is received by appropriate decorator class. It adds additional functionality of converting it to appropriate currency. And further this result is accessed by the sales tax converter and adds again additional functionality by adding the sales tax and finally returns the data back to client. The best part is that in this whole process, client still relies on the old existing interface. Let's hop over to Visual Studio and extend our code. Let's add a folder called Decorators. Let's create our abstract base decorator class, Cost Calculator Base Decorator. Implement iCost Calculator. Create Constructor and Inject iCost Calculator. Now this is where the other decorator object implementing same interface will be injected. Now get total cost will just make a call to our main cost calculator and return the total cost. Remember in our instance it always returns the amount in dollar. Now we want to add a currency conversion behavior to our existing cost calculator object right? So let's add our concrete currency conversion decorator. Inherit our base abstract decorator class. Let's receive the country code as a constructor parameter. Inject our cost calculator and send this to base. Let's override the base get total cost method here as we would like to add our currency conversion logic to the total cost. For now, let's have a constant dictionary for having the exchange rate. Let's multiply the exchange rate with the total cost. 
Let's make some changes to our factory. Receive country code and I cost calculator. Let's write switch case based on the country code. Default to return the amount in the default currency that is dollar. Let's write a case for India. Now this returns the amount in dollar right? And we would like to add currency conversion to it. Let's decorate our currency converter class to base cost calculator object. Pass the country code. And this should be replaced with the incoming cost calculator. We are almost done. Let's quickly see what we have done till now. We have created a base decorator class and implemented and injected the same iCost calculator interface. And get total cost calls the main cost calculator and returns the amount. And we have inherited abstract decorator to our concrete decorator class. Overrides get total cost where it gets the base cost and converts it in given currency and returns. And finally in factory, the given cost calculator which in our case the main calculator is decorated with currency conversion decorator. Now let's go ahead and make the appropriate changes to our shopping cart class. Let's take country code as constructor parameter to it. Let's pass country code and main cost calculator. The most important thing to notice here is that earlier the client used to expect I cost calculator and now with the addition of new behavior that is currency conversion still client is not impacted still it is fine with I cost calculator let's build it let's see the error okay let's add the country code seems all good let's run it so, we get the converted total amount. Now, let's say you have a new requirement of adding new sales text to it. So, what would you do? Let's create our sales text decorator class. For the interest of time, I have already written the code. Let me copy and paste that. So to this decorator as well, we have inherited our abstract base decorator, received the current text rent, overridden get total cost and added sales text to the total amount and return the new amount. Let's make a small change to our factory to adapt this requirement. So any idea what we have to do here? Yes, just decorate currency converter decorator with sales text decorator. Let's add new sales text rate. That's it, we are done. We have added sales text requirement polymorphically and with very minimum changes to the existing code. Let's run this. See, the new cost is reflected in the report. And again, the client still relies on our old main interface iCost calculator. Now, as discussed earlier, we would like to achieve this, right? So, let's quickly implement one more decorator pattern in our client side. Again, for the interest of time, I have already written a couple of classes. Let's see that. Here, I have created an interface iDesigner, which has a single method called GetTableStyle. Implemented the interface in a class called Designer. Instantiate our shopping cart class and call get shopping cart detail created a html table string and table border color given as dark bottle green created a row which holds the header shopping cart report one more row for table header which contains order id price and quantity we loop through all the orders and display the data, order ID, price and quantity in a different row. 
finally created a last row to display the total cost. Now let's go to program.cs and call get table style. Let's comment this code. Let's instantiate our designer class. Let's write the HTML string in a HTML file. Here we are creating a shopping cart folder and inside that a shopping cart.htm file. Let's get our HTML data from designer object. Let's build it. All good. Let's run this from our run command. See you get your data in a nice designer table. Now let's say you got an another requirement to wrap this up in an another red color border. And you have a limitation that you cannot extend the existing designer class. To put this constraint, let's make the class as sealed. Now what do you think? Which is the best way to extend this class? Decorator seems to be a good option, right? So let's create our decorator base class for the new table style use case. Now for the interest of time, let me write the code and come back. So this is an abstract class where we have implemented our main iDesigner interface and injected the same as well. We have made getTableStyle method as virtual so that our concrete decorator can override it. And it just returns the main implementation of our getTableStyle method. Let's create our concrete decorator. Again, to save time, let me code and come back. Let me rename this to decorator designer base. So what we have done here, we have inherited our abstract decorator base class, injected iDesigner and send that to base. Created our wrapper table with a new border color. This is kind of red and get the base table style with data and display it in a new row. And finally return the new HTML. That's it. I hope you have realized here that we have extended our application with new requirement but without touching our existing designer class and interface. And our client would still rely on the same interface iDesigner. So what do you think? What we should do to adapt this new separate implementation of our outer border decorator? Just decorate this existing designer class with our new outer border decorator. That's it. Let's build this. All good. Let's run this. HTML table has been successfully created. Let's copy this and run this from our run command. There we go. You can see our nice red outer table border color is available. And this we have implemented without touching our existing code. Here we have basically implemented decorator pattern twice, first in our business logic and then in our view. I hope the decorator pattern is clear to you. If this video was helpful then please do share and comment to see more such content. Thanks.